Hello, welcome to my level three Pilates class. If you've already done the level two class and that worked for you, then maybe this will be the next place to go. Bear in mind, there might be some moves in this particular class you would like to leave out. Uh, if you think they're gonna be uncomfortable or cause you any pain, then please don't do them. I've got a yoga mat here I'm gonna lie on, but you could use a blanket or a towel folded up to give your back a little bit of cushioning. I've got a couple of folded up towels, which I can use as yoga blocks if I wish. And I've got a nice long scarf, which I might want to use instead of a resistance band. Before you start this class, I would do the standing warm up that I've uploaded on YouTube just to get your whole body moving. But we will do a, a few just mobility movements at the moment just to get started. So if you want to bring your chin down and just roll from side to side. So getting your neck moving nice and slowly. Start to think about your breathing while you're doing this. Breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. In through your nose, out through your mouth. And we'll try to breathe in that way throughout the class. And when we're breathing, we really need to focus on opening our ribs up at the sides, rather like a pair of bellows opening. Good. And then just come to the center and give your shoulders a few nice big rolls. I'm going to come down onto my back now, just get a little bit more mobility going through the body before we start. So if you'd like to bring yourself down, your heels are in line with your sit bones. You're going to tuck your shoulder blades slightly away and then just zip up from cubic bone to navel and lightly draw the navel into the spine. Reach both of arms, both of your arms above you, and just stretch one arm, then the other. Like you're trying to touch the ceiling and allow your shoulder blade to come away from the floor on the side where your arm stretches up. If you feel comfortable to just nod your chin down, you can lift your head as well. Just get a little bit of rotation going up in the upper area of the back and just a couple more and release good so we'll bring the legs up to tabletop position we'll join the navel and slightly flatten behind the waist really really subtly into an imprint position and then bring the knees in together and then out to the side. So I'm keeping my big toes together and I'm trying to get into my hip joints. Now I'm just mobilizing into the hip joint. I'm keeping my core engaged. I'm just keeping that little tiny bit of pressure through the back of the waist. It really is subtle into an imprint position. Good, then let's go the other way. So just take your legs in the opposite direction. So the big toes stay together and the knees just open out and close again. Good. Thank you. And let's come down. Just bring one knee in towards you and stretch the other leg away from you. You can bring that leg down to the ground and this one's drawn in towards your chest. And then just slide and change over. Good. So we're going to take this into the single leg stretch. So you can leave your head down if you prefer, or you can nod your chin in and slide your ribs to your hips, which lifts your shoulders. And then this leg can lift easier to the ceiling, slightly more challenging, 45 degrees. So take a breath, and as you exhale, squeeze for two. Breathe in, squeeze for two. Good. So in breath to change, out breath for that double pulse. You want to keep your core engaged the whole time you're doing this, zipping up down below, drawing in the navel, keeping the length through the back of the 
neck there, or if you're preferring, letting the head rest down. If you find in this position with your head that your back wants to start arching, your waist wants to start really excessively lifting, then go into an imprint, just gently lengthen down behind the waist as if you're pressing a little olive underneath your waist down towards the ground. Let's do six more. And rest. Let your hands rest on your knees and let your heels just naturally drop down towards your hips. And if you like, you can take yourself for a few little circles. Rest your abdominals while you're doing this because you're holding your legs, so the abs don't really have to help you with that. And then take yourself in the opposite direction. Good. So we're going to do a version of the double leg stretch now, the Pilates shootout. So we're going to zip up the tummy and draw in the navel. And as we stretch the legs away, we're going to reach the arms back so they rest by the ears. And then we're going to come back in again. We're going to inhale when we do this. And we're going to exhale when we do this. Good. Squeezing in. So I'm bringing my heels together and turning my toes out. And then I'm bringing my toes and my knees back together again here. Now, I'm imprinting the spine at this point. I'm slightly deepening behind the waist. And if I wish, I could now come up and reach for my heels. So I'm going to breathe in, keeping the abs nice and strong, and breathe out as I come over. Head down, as we started with this move, is fine all the way through, if you like, but you might need to keep an imprint while you do it. So take a nice big breath, breathe out. If you find it gets a little bit too challenging, take the legs up to a higher position again. It's not quite such a heavy load with the core up there, but if you want more, go a bit lower. Let's do four more. Last two. And rest. Good. Let's take a full body stretch. Focus on stretching those lower abdominals. So really stretch your legs away from your hips and let your arms feel like they're lengthening back behind you. So your rib cage feels like it wants to follow your arms and this part of your body really stretches out. and then bring the band arms back down to your sides. Now I'm going to go into some shoulder bridges now. If in my classes you normally avoid the shoulder bridge, then please feel free to avoid it now and use the options that we would normally use in class instead. So for the bridge, heels come in a bit closer. If you have been using a towel as a block under your head, I would take it out because there's a lot of weight shifting back in this one. Zip up the abs, draw in the navel, tuck the shoulders away. So I'm just going to come up a few times, lifting and lowering. Naturally, I'm zipping up the belly, got the navel drawn in, but I'm also getting a bit of work into the backs of my thighs and my glutes, my buttock muscles here. Tuck in your chin when you get to the top and then flow yourself back down into the ground. You can really give your spine a nice workout on the way down. Just letting one bone at a time come down. Now, feel free to stay with this, okay? But I'm going to come into some leg lifts. So I'm going to lift up, hold the position, so the core's engaged, and I'm going to lift up the leg that's nearest to you to 90 degrees. Then I'm going to stretch it up and flex my foot, and I'm going to push my foot away, keeping my hips as level as I can, and then I'm going to replace that foot, and I'm just going to give my hips, oh, yep, they've dropped, Got to watch out for that. Then the other leg's coming up. I'm going to keep these hips really level while I do this. Take the leg up, keep the abs nice and strong and push the heel away, keeping the hip bones level. And then bring your foot back into position and then slowly bring your spine back down. So I'm going to do that again. 
they got an option this time. You can do it like we did. We lift it up and then we lifted the leg. Or you can come into tabletop with this leg that's nearest to me and push up through the other foot to take yourself up into the bridge. This is stronger. So keep the abs nice and tight, push into the foot that's on the floor and lift yourself up to bridge and then lengthen up and push away. And then down. And then we'll just lift the other leg up from here. Good. And push away, lengthen through the heel, keep the hips level, bend and flow back into the ground. Good. And then if you lifted your leg first, let's do the leg that's furthest away from each other this time, okay? Remember, you can do this lifting with both feet on the floor if you prefer. So, nice and strong in here and lifting up. Good. And then lifting and flexing and lengthening. Keeping the hips really stable. Here comes the other leg. Get up. and return good ease yourself back down and give your knees a nice big hug so take yourself for a few circles and then back in the opposite direction so now because we've worked the back of the legs the hamstrings quite hard we're going to go into another abdominal strengthening move the single straight leg stretch looks like scissors so take your legs up to the ceiling and draw one of your legs in towards you. Now you can hold up around your calf or you can hold around your heart, around your thigh. Just try to avoid holding behind the knee and making it bend because if we want to stretch these hamstrings we need to try and keep our leg as long as possible. Now I'm going to hold this leg in towards me for two pulses. One, two. I'm going to take a breath in through the nose and I'm going to breathe out through the mouth as I pulse the other leg. Can you see I'm starting to scissor that other leg a bit further away from me now? You can drop it quite low if you'd like. Keep the abs nice and strong. And if you're going to keep your head down where mine is currently, go into imprint. So a little tiny, weeny little bit of pressure behind your waist. Remember that olive and you're just pressing your spine down gradually into it. If you're happy to though, however, nod in the chin, slide the ribs to the hips and come up into more of an ab prep position here. Breathing out as you come in for the pulses, breathing in as you change at that point. Now, if you want to make this a little bit stronger, do the change over a little bit further away from you. So you're working with longer levers at that point, which loads up the abs even more. Let's do six more. Four more. I've lost count, so I'm going to do two more. <laughs> Lovely stuff. Come on down. Let your head have a rest down. Drop your knees over towards me. And while you're doing that, take both of your arms and your face away from me. So legs come towards me and everything else goes the other way. Then come back and repeat the other way. So now you're looking at me, your arms are pointing at me, but your legs are going to the wall behind you. That's it, breathe in. Come to the centre and roll across. Breathe in and roll across. Let's do four more of those. Lovely stuff, good. Okay, let's come on to our sides. We're going to do the side passe. So I'm going to lie down. I can extend my arm above my head and rest my ear on it. You can put a little blanket in there if you like, just to bring your neck into a nice alignment. Or if you want to, you could bend your elbow and hold your head. Now, with all the joints stack, stack shoulder above shoulder, hip above hip, knee above knee and toes above toes, I'm going to bring the legs slightly forward. Then I'm going to press down through my tailbone so I feel a lengthening sensation in my lower back. So you can have a hand on the floor and try a hand on your hip if you like. I'm going to run the top toes up the inside of the bottom leg, my knees pointing slightly upwards. Then I'm going to extend my leg and push through my heel as I lower the leg down. Keeping it strong in the centre, zipping up. 
Breathing in as we lift, extending and breathing out as we push away. And again, breathing in and breathing out. On the way down, when you're lowering your leg and pushing through your heel, imagine you've got a belt on and it's been tightened right at this moment. So you feel the lower side of your waist slightly lifted. So let's do four more. Inhale and exhale. Try to avoid your pelvis moving. As you lift your leg up, you might find your hips are trying to roll back. See if you can avoid that and we'll just do two more. Breathing in and out, nice and strong around the waist. And last time, breathing in and breathing out. Excellent. Just pop the knee in front of you on the floor and just relax, relax for a moment. So we're going to work the inner thighs now of the bottom leg. So we're going to lie ourselves back down. Pop that little support in there if you like. And we're going to do the clapperboard. So I'm going to keep it really strong down here, zipping up, tightening up the waist. And I'm going to lift my top leg so it's in line with my hip. And this bottom leg is the one that's going to be active. And as I breathe out, I'm going to lift it up and I breathe in and I lower it down. So breathing out and breathing in. Let's do five more. Last time. Great stuff. Come on up onto all fours. So we want to be in a position where we have the wrists under the shoulders and the knees under the hips. So we want to take ourselves into the pointer, but we're going to do some crunches. So use the arm that's nearest to me and the leg that's furthest away from me and just stretch yourself out into the pointer. Imagine you're balancing a tennis ball on the back of your hips. And you're really trying to lift that leg nice and high, squeezing your buttock. Now, eight times we're going to bring the elbow to the knee as we breathe out. So take a nice big breath and breathe out and breathe in. Just four more. So breathing in, out, and in. Three more. And last one. Good. And rest. Okay. I'm going to come into a uh, quite a strong move for the abs. Feels a bit like a plank when you're doing this. Put your toes onto the floor and press down through the heels of your hands and into the joints of your fingers. Zip up your belly, draw in your navel, take a breath, and as you breathe out, just lift your knees. They're only an inch or two above the floor. Now really press down through the wrists and feel like your collarbones are smiling so you can feel your shoulder blades drawing a bit closer, but your knees are just hovering. This is called bear. Good. And come on down. This is marauding bear. So your knees are on the ground and you're just circling around. And then you go back the other way. Okay, so let's repeat all that. Make sure you've got wrists under shoulders, knees under hips. This time it's leg that's nearest to me. I'm going to flex my foot there. Yeah. And then opposite arm, nice and strong in the abs, nice and stable. Take a breath and eight times on the exhale. One more times. Last couple. And back to the bear. So really strong down through the heels of the hands and all those finger joints. Bring your thumb quite close to your index finger, that helps it to be stronger. Then toes on the floor, zip up, draw in the navel, take a breath and up we go. So draw those shoulder blades slightly in towards the spine so your chest feels a little bit broader 
your hands are strong, your elbows not locked out, just slightly softer, and all the strength in your belly. Brilliant. Come on down, marauding bear in one direction and the other direction. Great work. Well done. Just turn yourself round so you can come down onto the other side of the body now and we'll go back to where we were. So lie yourself out, pop something in between your ear and your upper arm if you prefer. Yeah, or come to here if you'd rather, whichever you like best. And bring the legs very slightly forward, tighten up the abs. So here we go, the side passe. So draw up the toes, lengthen the leg. Remember, we're not going to let those hips move. They're going to stay still, breathing out all the way down. So breathing in. And now, breathing out and tightening the waist like it's trying to lift underneath. So you'll feel your waist sink at this point, but at this point, it's trying to hug back in towards you, away from your mat. Breathing in. And breathing out. So we'll do about four or five more, yeah? Try and make that leg feel super long when you're coming back down with it. You're lengthening and extending out through your heel as if you're trying to make it get beyond your other foot. About three more. And last one. Good. So let's just give that side a bit of a rest by putting that leg on the floor. Just come on down. So we're going to do the clapperboard again and work the inside thighs of this leg here that's been lying on the ground. So when you feel ready, let's stack the legs back again, one on top of the other. Okay. So zipping up the belly, drawing in the navel and keeping this hip bone above this hip bone that knee above that knee just lift the leg so it's in line with your hip and then keeping it strong in your center breathe out to lift and in to lower so out to lift and in to lower just five more so let's count down those five and four and three and two last one and rest good just bend your knees for a moment we're going to come onto our fronts briefly now we'll do a little bit of back extension work for the thoracic spine the upper part of the back so if we lie over onto our fronts now i'm going to slightly face towards you I'm just going to start these with some very simple back extensions, little back bends for the upper part of the back, with my arms on the floor in front of me, like a sphinx. I'm just going to lower and lift, like this. So I'm scooping my belly back in towards me, and my legs are in a parallel position, toes in line with hip bones, and I'm drawing the navel in towards the spine. Now. You could stay with this and do a few more of those if you'd like to. Or I'm going to come into some breaststroke. So I'm not swimming off anyway, don't worry. I'm going to come down and I'm going to put the backs of the hands on the floor down by the side of my thighs. So my thumbs can touch my thighs. If you don't want to put your forehead on the floor, just get a little towel again. And make a little sausage. You can put your forehead on that like this. That's quite nice. Keeps your neck nice and long when you're rested down. So I'm going to slide my hands up and forward, reach around and rest down. So I'm going to take a breath here into the ribs and I'm going to breathe out and round and breathe in. And out and round and breathe in. Four more times. Three more times. Last couple. And last one. And then I'm just going to come up and rest on my forearms in a sphinx position. Elbows are in line with the shoulders, but you could take them a little bit further forwards. And then 
drawing the shoulders back and drawing the chest through to the front. I'm just going to lift one leg at a time and flex, point and lower. Flex, point and lower. Flex, point and lower. Flex, point and lower. Last couple, and last one, and rest. If you face me, and just the knee on the same side, just draw it up. Let your back rest. That's it. And then we'll just change over. So we'll slide that leg away, and we'll bring up the other leg, and turn towards that knee and just rest for a second. Great. Okay, so let's come back onto our backs again, whichever way round on your mat you want to. So I'm going to come into a crisscross this time. I'm going to let my fingertips rest by the side of my temples. And I'm going to peel up, sliding the ribs to the hips, and opposite shoulder towards opposite leg, and back down again. So, you take your elbow back and look towards it. Now, if you want to make this stronger, lift one leg up to tabletop, go into the imprint, press the olive and lift up the other leg, and then keep this position, it's a little bit stronger, and you shoot the leg away. Breathe in, breathe in, breathe in, breathe in. So you're trying to pick up one of the shoulders, or the other's, other one stays down, because you want rotation in the upper part of your back. Let's do four more. And last one, <laughs> wonderful. Take your arms wide and your feet together and your knees wide and then literally just roll your hips from side to side. So your shoulders stay down on the floor, very, very relaxed and you're just letting your pelvis roll and your legs roll with your hips. Good. So last thing, we're going to put our hands together interlace our fingers and support our head completely with the hands. So pull your elbows outwards so the arms feel really strong and then draw your knees in and take your knees wide with your big toes together like we did earlier. I call this frog and flex. So there's frog and there's flex. I'm pushing my heels to the ceiling. So frog, take a breath and flex to the ceiling. Slightly imprinting the spine, guys, if you need to here. Now, if you want to make this more challenging, take your flex away from you, yeah? About 45 degrees. Inhale and exhale. So you want to stretch the groin here and then push knees and feet together. Four more. Keep zipped up. Couple more. And last one. And rest. Well done. Stretch out. Reach the arms above you, lengthen down through the legs, create lots of space between the hip bones and the rib cage. So the abs really have a good stretch. And then let's just do a couple of stretches to finish. So I'm going to bring up my leg that's nearest to you for a hamstring stretch. Hold with your scarf, or just hold your leg if you prefer, and just let everything lengthen out. Relax completely now. Let your abs relax, because the scarf's doing the job here, so you don't need, need to use your core to keep everything stable there. Just let your breath be nice and calm, nice full deep breaths in. 
practice your Pilates breathing into the sides of your ribs and just nice slow out breaths like a laser beam out through the ribs. Change the legs. Keep your tailbone down on the ground. Relax your shoulders. Good. So that leg up there is going to cross over this leg down here. So bend it, take your scarf off, and then bring that leg towards me and just look away from me. So this is twisted roots. It's going to stretch all the way down the side of the leg, around the hip and up the side of the back. So legs are coming to me, face is looking away from me. And that shoulder you're looking towards, that's staying down on the ground, so you need to have a little wiggle, a wiggle round to keep that shoulder down to do what you Good, good, good. And let's come back to the centre. And let's change and do that the other way. So let's bring this leg over the top. Now you're going to move away from me now, but you're going to look towards me. So your hips and your legs want to move away, and your face wants to turn in my direction. Let those shoulders down. Let the arms go, hands nice and relaxed as well. And come back to the centre. Good. Just roll onto your side to face me and bring your heel in towards your bottom. Squeeze it in. Press your hip bone slightly forward and try and keep your knee above your other knee if you can. And then if you just want to roll onto the other side, so you're looking away from me now, just bring that heel up towards your bottom. And just squeeze in. Should be feeling a bit of a stretch down the front of your thigh while you're doing this. And if you press your hip, hip bone forward a little bit as well that just moves it up slightly into the hip flexors and they work quite hard in a lot of Pilates moves. Wonderful. Just lie on your back, go back into your full body stretch, really lengthen out and then bring in your knees and give yourself a great big hug. Rock the hips around if you like, that can be quite nice. Lower back massage. And then you might want to just take a rest. Why not? Just lie and relax for a few moments. Just let go. Try and empty your mind if you can. So you're not really thinking about anything at all. You're just relaxing your whole body and your mind at the same time. We just work very hard for half an hour. So you deserve to chill out a little bit. <laughs>